Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be with you this morning. Good to be back. Well, I was sharing at 8 o'clock that there is always that moment when I get back in the pulpit where I feel like I'm, I'm desperately afraid that I'm going to forget something, which is a weird feeling, you know, when you've been doing it for like 15 years and you take a Sunday away, but it's apparently it's a perishable skill. So uh, Carrie was coaching me through at 8 o'clock. Hopefully all goes well this morning. What do you say, Carrie? Sounds good? Yeah? <laughs> She's got faith in me. It's good. Uh, I want to thank those of you who are wearing name tags, those of you who are worshiping with us from home. We are prayerfully, extremely, guardedly, optimistically, cautiously hopeful that the YouTube stream will work this morning. Uh, it is, uh, it's pleasant in the sanctuary. Uh, and uh, again, pew cards, those of you who have written to me or to Deacon Deb uh, with prayer requests or questions or other things going on, uh, those connection cards are fantastic. So keep them coming. Make sure that they get dropped in the offering plate, and you'll hear from me this week. These beautiful flowers on the altar are given by the Friedline family in celebration of energetic, fun-loving, now three-year-old Asher. So happy birthday to Asher and happy birthday to the Friedlines. Rally Day seems hard to believe, but we need to start talking about this. It will be Sunday, September 11th. We will go back to three services on Sunday. That's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 1030. And after each service, you can come down to Wesley Hall and learn about the various groups and activities that are on offer for this year at SUM. We'll also have a barbecue lunch. I'm partnering up with Tim Boswell and Matt Jameson and some other people to do that. And for those of you for whom that is not a thing, i.e. meat, there will be vegetarian options, and you'll be able to do that. We would love to know if you will be attending lunch on, by September the 2nd so that we can hold your spot for that. Reverend Kennedy Mawita Thomas, better known to us as Pastor Ken, uh, who has been working with Jan Baker and Days for Girls for quite a number of years now and who pastors a church in Kenya, will be visiting with us the end of September. Uh, he will be here for a couple of weeks, and so we hope that you will avail yourself and come and meet him. He looks forward to meeting you. There are two planning meetings to make sure that this event goes off as well as it can. The first one is Wednesday, August 24th. That's this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And then there's another meeting that's scheduled for after service next Sunday, August the 28th. If you are going to be there, if you've got questions, Jan Baker can get you straightened out on that and she's here with us this morning so please speak to her big thanks to susan samuel and beth nelson who've been working on our picture directory we've been updating this uh, and updating the directory in general you will have received drafts please make sure that you get any corrections or changes in it's supposed to be by today the 21st uh, but this is really important because when we reach out to you sometimes your cell phone number has changed your email address has changed. This kind of stuff happens all the time now, and it makes it really hard for us to get in touch with you. We then have to get creative about who are your friends and who knows you and who can we call to get that information. So please make sure that Susan and Beth see any changes or additions that you'd like to make. Speaking of Susan, uh, she is working with the Veterans Stand Down event. And so you've heard about this for the last few weeks. Uh, there are times when we have big asks of our congregation. You know, we're putting in technology, we're doing stuff like this. This time, it's a small ask. We're looking for lip balm. And we leave it to your discretion about what that is and what kind you'd like to provide, but we need a thousand lip balms. So many, many small things make one large thing. Please let Susan know the deadline for that is Wednesday, the 31st of August. That's not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. Hospitality kiosk is up and running. Check that out, and please help Heidi out. She says, peace and blessings, and thank you for your help there. Dinner and discussion is back up and running with Deacon Deb this Wednesday at 5.30 in the barn. You know the drill by now. Grab some food, bring some food, hang out. You'll be talking about Lily and Daniel. And religion, spirituality is not enough. Uh, check that out. Winstead Food Pantry. Uh, this is a, a passion for Barb Visquenza and for many of the rest of you. And so we are still collecting for that. Those boxes, as always, are on the stage. And our next meal packing event, I know it seems crazy to be talking about it, but it was so popular last time. That's October 22nd. So you can kind of store that in the back of your brain, and we'll get back to that. 
the last piece that I wanted to let you know about before we hear from Rick Atchison this morning is South Park. Now, when COVID happened, we thought that we were all done with South Park. South Park was changing how they did what they did and that we would no longer need to be providing food. We liquidated our South Park account. Uh, South Park, wonderfully, is back up and running. And the Sameses have been doing this. And some of you have been meeting the first Tuesday of every month to cook for South Park. And we're looking for a little bit of help to get that fungulation back up where it should be. So if you are a person to do that, you can talk to Matt Jamison. He's in the back about how to get involved uh, for the September 6th event. Uh, Mike and Sue wish them uh, safe travels. They're on their way to Iona uh, around that time. So that's pretty cool stuff. Any questions, please follow up with me after the service or the name of the person that you heard uh, if you've got questions or want to get involved. Mr. Atchison. Morning, everybody. Morning. So episode five of our safety training, and uh, this is the end of our summer season, so we'll take a little break. I uh, just want to talk about uh, a topic of medical emergencies. Should we have one in the church? Um, we have started training our safety team with basic first aid and CPR. First group went through back in July. Second group, we're trying to get that lined up for September. So if you have a need, please look for one of them. Uh, they'll, they'll do the best they can to help you out. I also mention this because we're going to open this up to the entire congregation. Uh, once we get the safety folks through, then we'll start setting up classes. So if you are interested, please let me know. Um, the other thing on here is I want to just remind folks that if you have medical training and are willing to help out, if there is an emergency, please let us know. We're not trying to put anybody on the spot, but if you're willing to help out, that would be great. And the other thing I want to point out, if there is a medical emergency, we really want to respect people's privacy. So if it's something that occurs during the service, we may actually stop the service, clear people out, or at least get them away from the crowd. There's you know, certain things we have to do. Um, we're just trying to be respectful of people and what's going on. So that's it for this morning. Thanks, Rick. Last thing I was asked on the way in, just to remind you, you may have noticed uh, that there are these beautiful painted rocks that have appeared around the campus. If you haven't noticed, as you're making your way around the campus, check out the flower beds, look by the stairs, they are scattered around. And these are a passion project of one of our members, Bev Schutte, who makes these beautiful, beautiful designs on these rocks. Those rocks, friends, are for you. If you see one that speaks to you, take it home. Find a nice place, give it to a friend, somebody who needs it. Uh, they're beautiful, they're all different, uh, and they are darned durable too. So you can put it in your own garden outside. Uh, and if you take them, Bev will make more. So please make sure to grab one. I've got one in my office, and uh, I hope you take one home with you today. Let us worship.
invite you to join me this morning in the call to worship. God calls us, whether we are young or old, bent over or standing tall or somewhere in between, in dry deserts and beside springs of water, when we feel strong and safe, when we feel scared or abandoned, God calls all of us and offers to set us free from whatever keeps us bound. Let us come, then, and offer worship and praise to this wondrous God. O sacred word of life, we rejoice in your call in our lives. Open our ears to the whispering spirit that gathers us into one body, your church. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing number 577. It's in your United Methodist hymnal. Adults may be seated as children come forward for children's time, and we'll sing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah.
Good morning. Thank you so much. It is good to see you. Thank you for helping to put away our musical instruments. So I was away last week. I didn't get to ask you my question. Has anybody been to the pool the last week? Yep. Anybody been swimming? Anybody been to the beach? All right. Anybody had ice cream? Have you ridden your bike? Skated on a skateboard? Roller skated? No? All right. Have you been anywhere fun? Yes. Oh, that's so good. I'm so glad to hear that you've been having fun. We had fun too, and I was thinking about you while I was gone. I was thinking about you because I love you, and I love this time that we get to spend together every Sunday when you come up. And I was wondering, who else do you think loves you? Who, who loves you? Is there anybody here that loves you? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, God does, right? Pastor's kids jumping right to the front of the line. Yeah, absolutely, right? <laughs> anybody else? Yeah? Mom? Dad? Grandma? Grandpa? Little brothers? Yes, absolutely. Take advantage of that. Not always, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I love you too. And so, yes, yes, God loves you too. Now, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever yelled in church? You've never yelled in church? Why not? Would you like to yell in church? If I said it was okay? No, we're not sure. Okay, well, I'm going to encourage you to maybe speak a little louder than you normally would. You don't have to yell. You don't have to scream, right? Okay, all right? But here, let's try this. Here's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about how God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it, okay? Right? God loves you, and there's nothing that I can do about it, right? Yeah, that's what you're going to say. Say it with me. God loves me. God loves me. And there's nothing I can do about it. All right? I, c I really couldn't hear you. I'm sure that they couldn't hear you, right? Let's say it a little bit louder. God loves me. And there's nothing I can do about it. Well, that was better. I don't know that the people all the way in the back could hear you yet, though, right? Let's say it one more time. Let's see if we can make them hear you, too. God loves, me, God loves me, and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> that was really well done. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, there is a lot of love in this room, and we know that you love us. We know that there's nothing that we can do about it. And that is a wonderful thing and worthy of shouting. We thank you. We pray in your name. Amen. Have fun in Sunday school.
Thanks, Chris. It's always fun to have you come and play for us. Carrie, always fun to see you slide over the piano. Friends, it's time for a prayer of confession. Sometimes these are solo prayers. Sometimes these have an opportunity for you to join. This morning, it is an opportunity for you to join. And you'll see that your response is, enfold us with your grace. Healing God, when we shoulder burdens not ours to carry. When we clench our fists and our hearts with rage and anger. When we let ourselves become overwhelmed with things around us and ignore people. When we make unwise choices or ones that we know are unfaithful to you. When we allow our doubts to shut us down rather than open us up to new wonderings and new possibilities. Amen. God, who is our rock, our refuge, the one who rescues, heals, and loves us, also forgives us and sets us free to new and everlasting life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. I will be reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10, from the NRSV Bible. The book of Jeremiah records the final prophecies to Judah, warning of oncoming destruction if the nation does not repent. Jeremiah calls out the nation to turn back to God. At the same time, Jeremiah recognizes the inevitability of Judah's destruction due to unrepentant idolatry and immorality. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, oh Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See. Today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Barbara. The gospel reading this morning it's from the 13th chapter of Luke, verses 10 through 17. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailments. When he laid his hands on her immediately, she shut up, stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which to work ought to be done and come on those days and be cured, but not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When Jesus had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, 
And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things being done by him. Here ends this morning's good news. So you know, I was gone last week. We were on our way to Hilton Head. We spent a week at the beach with my sister and her husband and their kids and my parents and my brother-in-law's brother and his, two of his girls, he has three. It was a wonderful trip. Spent a lot of time floating in the ocean, battling sea nettle jellyfish. Apparently it's mating season off of Hilton Head. But we spent a lot of time in the van, too. If you've looked at a map recently, Hilton Head is not close. And as I've gotten older, South Carolina feels like it's gotten further away. But we had a good time. As I said before we left, we had plenty of snacks, we had drinks, we had Harry Potter to finish listening to on audiobook. We found some new friends along the way. We listened to music, we counted license plates, Isaac and I scouted for cars, and we looked for the first place that we could stop to buy, buy boiled peanuts. Yes. <laughs> if you don't know, ask Cassandra. She'll get you straightened out, all right? But there seemed to be a sound anomaly in our van all the way down and all the way back, something that I could not hear, and I don't know why. Amelia, when we were on our way down and on our way back, was sitting directly behind me. And despite my best efforts, and despite her ability to be louder than she pretended that she normally is during children's time, I couldn't hear her. I could hear Aaron sitting next to me just fine. I could hear Isaac sitting diagonally across, but it seemed like every time that Amelia said something to me, I missed it. Now, it may not have been a hundred percent of the time, but it was a lot of the time. And I found myself asking her to speak up, repeat herself, say it again, I'm sorry I missed it, honey. It happened a lot. It got me thinking about other times that we don't hear things clearly. As I said, we were listening to Harry Potter. We finished up the last book on audiobook. It was fantastic. No spoilers, but all is well. And of course, I was thinking of one of the former headmasters of Hogwarts, Dexter Fortescue. You can look him up. He's the one who hangs out in Dumbledore's office who has the ear trumpet, and he can never hear what Harry's trying to say to him. I was thinking of Mike TV in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, who Willy Wonka accuses repeatedly of mumbling. I thought of the conversation with the FDA this week about hearing aids and accessibility for those who need them to participate and to hear better. Thinking a lot about our ability to hear and our ability to speak up. And that all too often we wind up like the children did this morning at the beginning of the children's moment where we don't want to shout to be heard. I love the passage that Barbara read this morning from Jeremiah. This beautiful moment between God and this young prophet. God reminding the prophet that Jeremiah has been known from the very beginning of the beginning to God. And that despite Jeremiah's belief that he is too young, with the wrong words, not able to do the job, God calls him anyway. Jeremiah says, but what will I say? What if I don't know the words? What if no one will listen to me? And God touches his lips, this beautiful, intimate, tender moment, and says, I will be there, and I will give you the words. All you need to do is to speak them. Love it. It's a reminder to me, as a pastor, someone who has been blessed and fortunate to journey with you as a congregation over the last number of years now, that in my moments where I feel like I don't have the words, where I don't know what to say, God's promise shines through those moments, I hope. And that 
either because of me or in spite of me, as Bishop Bickerton likes to say, God's message comes through clearly. A promise made to Jeremiah. A promise made to us. And sometimes in those moments when we are called to speak, those moments are unpleasant. This passage from Luke, the crippled woman, comes to Jesus bent over at the waist. Most of us, I hope, cannot even begin to imagine what this would be like, those kind of physical ailments that do not enable us to stand even remotely straight. And Jesus, without thinking about it, heals her only to be called on the carpet by the head of the synagogue, who says, why today? Today we don't work, but you do. Come back any other time. But this woman had been bound for years. When was her time? Why hadn't it happened? And Jesus, having the words at his lips, rebukes the man and says, you even take care of your animals better than this woman. Why not now? And so all of this, inevitably, passage from Jeremiah, passage from Luke, Dexter Fortescue and Mike TV and my inability to hear my daughter on this road trip, all of this made me think of you and me. And how sometimes what we really need to do in life is speak up. Speak up because those around us can't hear us. Because they're unable, because they're unwilling, they have an inability. We need to speak louder and more clearly about who we are and what we see and what we need. In this church, in this community, in this nation, in this world, yes, absolutely. To know that as Christians we are called to do that each and every day in love. But it also made me realize how often we are afraid to do that. Afraid that we are too young or too old, too fat, too thin, too white, too black, too male, too female, too whatever, to open our mouths and speak. Afraid that because we're not Jesus, we won't have the right words. Afraid that because we're not the pastor of the church, we won't have the right words. Afraid that because we didn't finish college or we're only in sixth grade or whatever it is, that we will not have the words that we need to spread the message that's on our heart. And so I find myself back in that passage from Jeremiah. But Lord, I'm only a boy. I don't have the right words. You'll remember Moses tried this too, but Lord, I get my words jumbled up sometimes. You remember this from the disciples, but I'm only a humble fisherman, but I'm only a woman. But I'm a tax collector. But I'm a sinner. And God says it doesn't matter. I'll be there with you. But I want you to speak up, speak out to the people around you, but also to speak to me clearly. Speak to God clearly. Use the words that you would use, not the words that I would use or that your beloved pastor from childhood used. Use your words to talk to God, even if they're words that maybe you wouldn't use on a Sunday morning in this space even if they're words that wouldn't make any sense to anybody else. Use those words because God has known you from the very beginning. Scripture tells us God has known every hair on your head, whether they're there now or not. And God loves you. And God will be there. Friends, we don't live in time... From mumbling. We don't live in a time where we can hide our light under a bushel basket. We don't live in a time where we can have quiet conversation only within the hearts and minds of ourselves. We need to 
Speak up. Speak up for the challenges that exist in our lives, to God, to our friends, to each other. Speak up for those who can't or won't. Speak up always in love. I invite you to stand as you are able. And join in singing 2051, I was there to hear your morning cry. It's in the faith we sing. Please be seated. When we pray in church, those words come from lots of places. They come from me, they come from Deacon Deb, they come from books, they come from online sources, but really what they are designed and intended to do is to create a space for you, for us, to enter into with the concerns and the prayers that we bring. We all have them. Prayers for the world, prayers for ourselves, our children, our loved ones, our spouses, on and on and on. And so I pray that these words would provide an opening for you and the prayers that you have brought this morning. Would you pray with me? Let us listen to those who challenge us with prophetic voices that we might understand their passion for life see things from a new perspective, and that we might make new and deeper connections with them. Let us listen to children when they talk about grown-ups, when they talk about church, when they talk about God, that they might be ministers among us. Let us listen to the women, long silenced by religion, that we might see what they saw and hear what they heard and 
feel what they felt. Let us listen to the elders. And not only their stories of the past, but also to their dreams for the future. That we might gain their wisdom and draw strength from their faith. Let us listen to those who live with disabilities, their own or someone else's that we might gain new insight on what it means to welcome others. Let us listen to those who speak anonymously in statistics of death and persecution and unsolved disappearances that we might gain a new appreciation for the freedoms we enjoy and work for the same for all people. Let us listen to those who love the earth and give voice to its needs, its wounds, its potential, that we might be drawn into a deeper communion with God's creation, of which we are but a part. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, is as, as is our custom, I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing Praise God from whom all blessings flow as the offering is brought forth. Christ, we receive a new room, a dwelling place that cannot be shaken. Accept our offerings, O God, and may the Spirit's fire refine it for your service and always for your glory. Our closing hymn this morning, 2161, To Know You More.
friends, touched by the presence of God, we go to be a healing presence in our world. And uplifted by the Spirit of Christ, we stand firm for all that is just and true. So go, and the community of Christ goes with you. And the people said, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you.